This is the enforcer, C.W. Anderson, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com, and I listen to it because I'm Anderson. Ladies, gentlemen, and the flea. To start, allow me to introduce the corner man. Firstly, from a town named after delicious savory snack, best filled with meat and maybe some kind of salad, he is Jack. Secondly, at weigh-in today, he came in at a buff, ripped, chilled and jacked, low battery, he is one inch biceps. Thirdly, you all know me, I am the demon Barbie of Fleet Street. In the story history of In Your Head, we have had guests as distinguished as R.D. Reynolds, C.W. Anderson, J.J. Dillon, and some dude from California who posts on our message boards. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you all the man who I feel is without question, doubt, or chance of refute, the most recent. From Sea Isle City, New Jersey, he is the extreme horseman, the king of old school. He's held more heavyweight titles than the average internet fan has breasts. Not that he hasn't held his fair share of those, too. He is the wrestling god. He is Steve Carino. Wow, that must be the greatest intro I've ever gotten, ever. Wow. You looking for a job? Because I'll, I'll fire Brian Regal right now. I think we can make a deal on that. You can carry him around with you. Yeah. I don't eat much. I welcome Steve to the show. Oh, my... Hey, how you doing? I was, I was one step ahead of you. I was already doing my pleasure. <laughs> how you guys doing? We're all good. Pretty good. Uh, Absolutely. First thing I wanted to ask you, uh, why weren't you at the um, either of the ECW shows? Oh, easy. Uh... You know, as, as great as those shows were, uh, I always look at the ECW as my, my past, and I always like to look forward, so I decided not to do them. Were you offered to be on both of them? Yes. Did oh, you, that's fair enough. Did you uh, see both of them? I'm sorry? Did you watch either? No, I, I saw the, uh, the WWE version. What did you think of it? Did it capture the ECW? It. Um, you know, but for, for it not being alive for four years, I think it did, it did a real good job. You know, um, you know, the only, the only regret I saw was, like, not, you know, C.W. Anderson not getting a match and stuff like that. And, you know, I would have liked to see Danny Roadkill get a match. And, um, but besides that, I thought it was, it was really well done. Yeah. I really enjoyed it, too. Um, what did, what did you, did you hear about the Blue Meanie and, uh, JBL confrontation? Yes, yes. I read the internet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any uh, comments on that? Uh, you know what? I, I haven't, you know, you read much into it. Is yeah. yeah, I I wasn't there, and I, I you know, I don't know how the test thing. I like meanies. Yeah, I like JBL. So, yeah, hopefully they resolve it, and you know, hopefully the fans that think it's in a ring, you know, because it'll be fun. I see that. And uh, you know, if you know, if they if they go to legal action, I think that's Dumb, but you know, yeah. Let, let him settle it in a ring. Right. So I, I saw on your site that you won the uh, AWA title. Yes. What was that like? Were you a fan of the AWA when you were growing up? Yeah, you know, um, the first show I ever saw live was an AWA show in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, where where I was born. So um, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was an honor to do it. You know, the, the, you know, they're trying to make the rebirth of it, and you know, the right. name's always been big in Japan. So uh, it, it's quite an honor to, you know, and the, the Japanese fans were really, were really pleased. I got, I got so many emails from just from Japanese fans, you know. But um, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun, and you know, Takio Mori is such a great guy, and you know, w was a great champion for the, the five months that he held it. So you know, it was an honor to, to win it from him. Is that where the titles defended most often? Is, is in Japan? No, no. Well, you know, because of you know just economics, you know, when they did the tournament over there, it, it's hard for a lot of uh, the American ways to bring him over. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was always defended in Japan and then, you know, when it came to the States. And so since I've won it, you know, I, I started defending it in the States and then I'll defend it in Japan and Finland and, and UK and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you had both the AWA and the NWA title. Yes. Uh, which belt was your favorite to win? Was it the ECW one, your first title? You know what, David? They, they, they're all special, you know. Um, right. the, the ECW, of course, you know, because of, it was, you know, the first one I ever held, and you know, you never, you never forget your first girlfriend, right? 
Right. So, um, you know, the NWA was the, the, the first title I ever saw on TV. So, uh, and then the AWA title, you know, just for the history and, you know, trying to get the rebirth going and stuff like that. So, you know, they all mean a lot to me. And it's, uh, you know, it's just an honor that, you know, they all thought of me to put me in that spot. Right. Um, you got your start. Was it in the Dory Funk Dojo, or were you wrestling before that? No, I was wrestling before that. Um, I was wrestling for almost four years before the uh, Dory Funk Junior Dojo. But uh, you know, I'll be the first to admit that you know, once I had the uh, the dojo experience underneath, you know, uh, under me, you know, that's that's when I really started to get it. You know, the, the, a lot of wrestlers will tell you like there's there's a get it point. You know, when they they finally get it. So uh, yeah, that's that's the that's the way I was once. Uh, once I went to Dory's camp, you know, that's when I really felt my most comfortable. Uh, what other guys were there with you at the time? At, at the dojo, there was uh, Kurt Angle, Tess, Glenn Kolka, uh, Devin Storm, uh, Christopher Daniels. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was there. Sean Stasiak, Dr. Dusty Williams, Tiger Ali Singh. Uh, it, was, it was a good time, you know. We had a, we had a great bunch of guys, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Any of those guys that you think uh, would make it bigger? Or, I mean, did you guys would make it? We, we, we always, you know, Kurt was, you know, he was just a natural. I mean, just an absolute natural. You know, from the, just his, you know, demeanor to you know, the way he, he caught on to pro wrestling coming from, a, you know, an amateur background, especially, you know, the credentials that he brought. And, uh, you know, for him to to come in there and, you know, just set his mind to, all right, this is pro wrestling, it's different than amateur, you know, he deserves a lot of credit. He's, he's turned into, he's, he's turned into one of the, uh, like, greatest pro wrestlers, that, you know, of our generation. Oh, yeah. um, you know, Christopher Daniels, we always, we always knew Christopher Daniels was headed for stardom, and, you know, I was really surprised that WWE didn't pick him up, and uh, Tess did a great job, you know, when I was there, he had only, they had signed him, and he had only had, I think, 17 matches before they signed him and stuff like that. So uh, it, it was really cool to work out with all the guys. And you got to work with Dr. Death, and you got to work with Dr. Tom Pritchard. And, you know, Dory is just a, a great teacher and stuff like that. So, you know, really, it was a, a couple guys were headed for stardom. So for me, I didn't, I didn't think I was headed anywhere. <laughs> so after you were done in with uh, Dory Funk, how long were you on the independent scene before ECW came along? Uh, believe it or not, I went right from Dory's camp right to ECW. Right. And uh, which was amazing because we had all had to sign 90 day contracts saying, you know, we wouldn't go to, um, you know, we wouldn't go to any other company. You know, we could do independence, but you know, they had 90 days to decide if they wanted to sign us or yeah. stuff like that. Which, you know, and then I got the call from ECW, and it was funny because I had called up to the, the WWF office at the time, and I said, you know, hey, I got this, you know, this tryout. Can I go? And they're like, oh yeah, go ahead. I knew I wasn't getting signed right away, so. Uh, you know, ECW's door opened, and, uh, you know, I never looked back. When you first went there, were you ever worried about um, doing, like, uh, hardcore matches, or have you done them before? Well, I had done, I had done them before in Puerto Rico, and, uh, you know, when I had come up with the old school character, I, I thought of, I was looking around the indies, and, you know, ECW was becoming big, and everybody wanted to, everybody wanted to become ECW, so I said, man, you know, what would be great is if, you know, I was the exact opposite, and that you know, when I came into ECW, I was the anti-hardcore guy and right. stuff like that. But you know, I had seen the hardcore stuff in, you know, in my time in Puerto Rico and my limited time in Memphis and stuff like that. So it, it wasn't too shocking for me. I remember when you first came in, one of my favorite spots. You used to bring the chair in, and you would like sit on it and give the guy a headlock. Yeah, yeah, that was that was actually something me and Simon Diamond came up with on a car ride to New Jersey. You know. <laughs> During a snowstorm, we were thinking of like cool things that we could, you know, we could do to uh, to keep the um, the old school by the character. I'm gonna make it too. Uh, so uh, yeah, we came up with that on the uh, the way to a uh, to a show. Yeah. You have any uh, good road stories from ECW days? Oh, uh, let me see. I was gonna much. say, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had to catch me earlier. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, Dude, there, there was the time that Jack Fisher beat himself. That was, that was pretty cool. Um, and it was, it was true. Jack Fisher did pee himself. Um, he hot. Was he drinking? I said, was it in the ring or on the road? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I'm trying to think uh, if any good road story. I tried to, uh, 
Uh, if, you, if you would have gave me a little more time, I, w- I would have thought of some real good ones. Because you know, every every time I, I write them in my uh, in my my book, you know, I'm gonna come out with a book eventually when I get a good run somewhere. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I, I write a lot of them down. But uh, yeah, the Jack Victory penis pants in uh, in a hotel was one of my favorites. That's gonna be cool. Uh, yeah, because he called the whole company into the thing because we all thought he was in trouble. You know, he's calling us. He's guys, you gotta come into the room. Something's wrong. And little did we know that he was just. He looked like a water buffalo. <laughs> How did you become friends with uh, Jack Victory? Were you friends with him before ECW? Or? No, no, I met him there, uh, and it was funny because I was I was a huge Jack Victory fan growing up. You know, him and Johnny Tatum and and all the old UWF guys. So I was a huge, huge fan. And when when Paul put us together, I, I thought, wow, this is the the greatest thing. And we were only supposed to be together for a night, and you know, it's we we pretty much. I just saw Jack last weekend on a, on an indie show in Georgia, so it, it was it was it was really cool. I think uh, when we had CW on, he mentioned that uh, Victory works for NASA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's CW's really cool. always got some good stories. Yeah, we had him on. That was a really good show. For, for a guy that can barely speak English, he, he's got some funny <laughs> stories. Now, one of the fans on our message board has come up with the hard hitting questions. <laughs> And he wants to know who has the bigger tuckers, Cactus Jack or Jack Victory? Oh, you know what? I was just with Cactus uh, last year in Europe. Mm-hmm. I would definitely have to say that Jack Victory is bigger. Ah, that's exclusive. Yeah, it's exclusive. You can only hear here. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I, you know, he doesn't want to admit to it, but I do think Jack Victory is part Samoan. Oh. There's a big resemblance between uh, Jack Victory's uh, behind and Samoa Joe's. <laughs> Have you? S- well, thank you. <laughs> Have you seen Samoa Joe in TNA? No, no, we don't get it. <laughs> oh, you don't get well, it. Well, we don't get it. Yeah. So, uh, you have any? But I'm, I'm sure he's as big as fat, big and fat as he is in ROH. Yeah. <laughs> any plans on going back to TNA? No. <laughs> no. That was a quick answer. No. Yeah, well, you know what? They, they they haven't made any attempt to call me. I don't even know who runs the damn thing anymore. Yeah, that's true. It's Jeff, it, 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 you know. I knew I wouldn't go back if it was Russo. But, you know, I, who is going to be Moore is in charge now or something like that? Yeah, I think he's the booker now. Yeah. The la- I thought the last page of he was good. Scott's, Scott's a heck of a booker. I mean, I've, I've worked for him for Border City, so. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I had a great time with him. He was... Um, you know, he, he really knew his stuff, and he, he really put on a good show for the people. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if Scott's in charge, I, I would I would go back. Well, he's a great manager. It's a sad day whenever TNA doesn't want to get a hold of Steve Carino. Eh, you know. <laughs> a sad day, Frank Church. Uh, ECW, you're more of a manager. You're kind of a wrestling manager. Did you Manager in tights? Yeah, did you prefer doing manager that? Manager in tights. <laughs> huh? Did you prefer doing that, or did you like being your own wrestler? Yeah, my my body my body would have preferred it now, but um, at the time I was really, you know, I really wanted to work. You know, I wanted to get in the ring, and but I, I knew what my role was. You know, uh, they wanted they were teaching Rhino how to talk. You know, Paul spent a lot of time with Rhino, and um, um, you know, oh, and you know, Tajiri tells everybody he doesn't speak English, but I know he does. Cause I've seen him driving. You know, it's much easier to speak English than to read it. So I know he speaks English. But, you know, for KK purposes, I guess, he uh, he didn't speak English. And uh, so, you know, that that was one of the reasons I was with, um, I was in that manager role and stuff like that. But, you know, I enjoyed it. You know, looking back, I would, I would definitely do it again. Yeah, you just want to be part of the show. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. managers usually don't get hurt as much, do you? All right. What was it like when you uh, first wrestled Dusty Rhodes? Oh, dream come true, huh? Were you a big fan of his growing up? Oh, absolutely. You know, I grew up. I grew up in Philadelphia area. You know, we used to get um, we used to get the uh, NWA at the Civic Center every every month. So you know, I was always there. And uh, yeah, for for to actually meet him was cool. You know, to actually be in a feud with him was even even cooler. Mm-hmm. You still uh, wrestle in Japan once in a while? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, around thirty weeks a year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I saw you. Uh, it was on a hustle show. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about Hustle? I think you know what? I used to hate it. I used to really hate it. But um, now, now I like it. You know, it's a lot of fun. You once you realize that it's more about the entertainment than it is about the pro wrestling. It's you know, it's not bad. We do some fun things. It gets a bad rap. And then, you know what? They've given me the opportunity to to do things that uh, I haven't gotten to done on a large scale before. I get to each matches. I get to you know be right in the uh, right in the mix of things, and you know, like do a different different gimmick, everything. So it, it's it's a lot of fun. It gets a bad rap in uh, like uh, the Wrestling Observer and stuff. But I checked out one of the tapes. I thought it was really fun. Like you said. Well, you know, Wrestling Observer's strong. You know. You know, those guys, are, as bookers, have drawn a lot of money, so. <laughs> you know what? If you watch it without, like, living there and being there, you know, it's like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The Rocky Horror Picture Show looks like a crappy movie. Until yeah. you actually go and experience, you know, experience it. You know what I mean? And then you get into the fun of it. But if you just watch it on video and, you know, you look at some of the gimmicks, you just go crazy. <laughs> well, I got a video of it. I enjoyed it. It was the one with uh, Foley. And uh, you read yeah. Dusty Rhodes. Ah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> did you yeah, that one wasn't. Huh? Uh, that wasn't one of my best friends. Oh, that's the only one I've seen. When did you start the Extreme Horseman uh, gimmick? We actually started that in um, 2001. We, we started that in uh, uh, Dusty Rhodes' with Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a lot of fun. You know, we, um, it was me, CW, and Barry Windham. And. Uh, you know, when uh, Kurt Bauer was starting MLW and he, he wanted to do um, the, uh, the stable with me and CW and Simon, we, you know, that was something we wanted to do for, you know, eight years at the time, you know, seven, eight years we wanted to be together. And, uh, you know, Kurt was finally giving us a chance to, so uh, we took full advantage of it and then we used the Extreme Horse to name that. And, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty cool for the time that we did it. Did you think MLW would be bigger than it was? Did you think it would have a no. longer run? No, you didn't. What? No, you know what? I, I thought it would have a longer run, but I, I thought we we actually overachieved a lot. Where you know, um, uh, there were there were times when we drew 1,500 people for uh, me and Funk in in Fort Lauderdale. I, I looked around and said, "Oh my goodness, you know, this this is getting too big, too fast," you know. Right. And um, but you know, it was a fun time for the time I was there. I, I had such a blast being there. I got to wrestle my heroes. I got to wrestle, you know, we we got to do the stuff with the Extreme Horsemen, so it was definitely something that uh, I loved. Why do you think it went down? Uh, when the investors pulled it out. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Where is your uh, favorite place to wrestle? What kind of style? Uh, Zero One. Zero One's definitely my favorite place to wrestle. Uh, ECW is great, MLW. Um, uh, I've always had a lot of fun there. Who's the, uh, your favorite opponents in Zero One? Um, Masato Tanaka or uh, Sakyo Mori. Masato, Masato, Masato. Both, are, both are a lot of fun to wrestle. When we uh, CW on the show, he told the story. Yeah. Uh, you're saying uh, that you always say he has the bigger head. No, he, he, I know where you're going to go with this. There was right. a time when I was really stressed out, and I swear to God, the guy, the guy got the measurement wrong. But we had a rematch. Did he tell you about the rematch? Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He was a, he was a lot. His head was a lot bigger than mine. <laughs> I think you know it probably depended on how much uh, scar tissue you had that day too. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm, t I'm telling you, it's definitely a stress a stress issue. You got more hair. Yeah, I'm taller. You know, so my head, head's got to be a little bigger. But you know, once once we had the um, once we had the rematch, you know, the truth was let out. His head is much bigger. <laughs> now we. When we had C.W. Anderson on, I mean, we did tell him that he's looking in a lot better shape than we've ever seen him before. He's looking good these days. Oh, yeah. He's, he's definitely gotten into a lot better shape. Yes, he, we, we mentioned that he'd lost weight, and he happened to tell us that you'd found it. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. Where he's on the, uh, I want to get in WWE diet, I'm on the, I like, uh, you know, I like the Dick Murdoch food diet. <laughs> nice. I'm on the same diet myself. We kind of said he oh. that one anyhow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> any uh, good any good road stories with CW in Japan? Not allowed to tell any. <laughs> yeah, we were all uh, R-rated for him. Uh, no, uh, me and CW have always have a lot of fun. Um, one of the, one of the funniest times was when his first tour over. 
there was me, there was Nova, Frankie Kazarian, um, Tom Howard, Predator. And Tom Howard had went out the night before and was drinking pretty heavy. And, he, you know, he had the upset stomach. So CW says, hey, I have an Alka-Seltzer. You know, would you like it? Oh, yeah, yeah, please do it. Well, you know, Tom Howard was like 32 at the time. And I guess he'd never had an Alka-Seltzer before because we look outside the bus and first we see CW laughing. So we're wondering what's going on. We look outside the bus and we see Tom Howard pop these two Alka-Seltzer just right in his mouth, not in the water. In his mouth. <laughs> and within 30 seconds, this guy's mouth is just covered in foam. And we're all laughing. You know, this guy's probably choking to death, but we're all laughing at him. And, uh, you know, it was finally CW and Nova that said, yeah, maybe we should help this guy out. But, you know, CW usually kick you when you're down. <laughs> what does entail helping somebody out with, with the uh, popping out the seltzers in the mouth? What do you do? Uh, yeah. There's nothing you can do but laugh at him. <laughs> I mean, if he would have died, I would have felt really bad. But That's come on. Uh, how do you like the food over in Japan? Uh, I've gotten used to it. I'm not, I'm not as um, adventurous as Spanky is, but uh, Spanky will eat anything. I mean, he's, he's had brains, he's had heart, he's had everything. You know, I, I try to stick to uh, any McDonald's I can find, some uh, Korean barbecue. You know, I, but um, there's times when I just bring the George Foreman grill with me and you know I I make my own stuff there's some more uh, questions here from a message board um, uh, Duckman he wants to know if you have any future plans for your training school uh, yeah we, we actually have some plans working out right now where uh, the pre preliminary plans are to open a dojo up in October and uh, yeah it should be fun you know we're, we're still working out the plans and the financing and everything for it so Hopefully, I'll have um, we'll have some sort of announcement like at the end of July. So uh, yeah, we're, we're looking we're looking forward to have a training school. Duckman mm -hmm. also wants to know: uh, Do you feel disrespected when ex WWE employees almost automatically get spots on tours when hardworking indie wrestlers fight for their spots? And I, I do and I don't, you know, because. Um, there's guys like Josh Daniels and, you know, um, Ricky Reyes and it, it guys, Joey Legend, that deserve to be on a lot of the tours. And, you know, you know then, you, then you have, you know, Rick Bassman pouring out some of his guys, uh, you know, that are, you know, not right off TV, but, you know, he, he tries to say, well, look, we got these ex-WWE guys, and I got nothing against Hardcore Kid or, you know, uh, Luther Reigns and stuff like that. But, you know what, they're, they're not going to help the, they're not going to help the product. You know, guys like Ricky Reyes and Josh Daniels and Alex Shelley and Spanky and Sandre and, you know, Joey Legend, th those guys will help the, they'll help the product out. And, um, you know, and it's, it's nothing against Hardcore Kid and Luther, but, you know, both of them are hurt. Both of them, you know, just came from WWE. They just, you know, they didn't last long. Uh, you know, Zero One Max has a, a kind of a set crowd, you know. If, if it was somebody huge, I mean, damn it, Austin would, you know, come to Zero One Max. That would be huge. You know, as somebody that's going to draw a lot of numbers, then, you know, I would have no problem with it. But I, I would definitely like to see um, the different guys, get, uh, different indie guys that are working hard get a, get a shot over there. Do you still help book um, indie guys from the U.S. to uh, have yep. tours? And, uh, so you must get a lot yep. of guys asking you to, uh, to get help oh, yeah. jobs over there. All the time, you know, and um, I take all the tapes over whether they're bad or they're good or, you know, whatever, you know, I always take it out because it's not, it's not for me to say, hey, you guys, you know, aren't good enough for Japan. Because um, let, let's face it, we, we've had a lot of crap talent on our shows, too. And uh, so, you know, it's what they're looking for. It's, it's what Joe One, the, the Otani and Nakamura are looking for. I bring over the tapes, and then when they decide who they want, I, I go ahead and I, I get the ticket, make sure they're taken care of. And, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty much the go-between uh, between the bookers and the the boys. Oh, that's cool. Um, also on our message board, uh, Tyler wants to know, when did you start uh, bringing your own ring announcer with you? Uh, I started that in ROH, what was that, in 2003. Wow, it's been two years already. Holy oh, jeez. But, uh, yeah, I did that. Uh, you know what? I, w I wanted to, at the time, I was big heel in ROH, and I was always against ROH, so I wanted to do something that no one was doing in ROH, and I figured, you know what? I'll bring my own crew. I'll bring my own, uh, you know, I'll bring my own ring announcer. I'll do, I'll do everything. I did everything I could to uh, garner some heat. And I did, I think, with the boys more than I did with the fans. <laughs> what do you think of the Ring of Honor product? Oh, it's awesome. 
it's it's definitely awesome. I mean, any DVD you watch, you got you can only watch half of it because you're all blown up from all the spots. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's an awesome product. I, I love watching it on tape. Um, those guys work their ass off. I mean, they're you know from top to bottom. It, it's it's like a newer version of ECW, not not the same product, but just the innovative stuff. You know, these guys are going out for a match one to match ten, and you, you're seeing guys doing things that I couldn't even pronounce or, you know, physically even do when I was in good shape. Right. They're bringing a new style. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. PCW is the first place you saw, like, any Guerrero and stuff in the United States. Yep. It's a great alternative to sports entertainment. Um, you ever have plans going back to Ring of Honor? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know when I'm going to show up. I was you never know when I'm going to show up. Yeah, I always try to keep people guessing. All right. Maybe I'll show up. Maybe I won't. I don't know. How's the ear? I think you uh, didn't you lose hearing in one of your ears in one of the matches in yes. Honor? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm talking to you from my right ear, so that's doing well. Left one's dead. I don't think it'll ever come back. Uh, I can get the surgery, but the, the, there's a chance that if I get the surgery, I could def- I get slapped again, or I take the wrong bump, I, I could go deaf again. So, you know, why waste the money? I'll just try and get it once I'm done. Which okay, could be yeah. tomorrow. But, uh, yeah. Give you trouble when you fly? I'm sorry? Does the air give you trouble when you're flying? Yeah, yeah. It, it, believe it or not, it pretty much knocks me out. Yeah. Like, um, I lose I lose a lot of uh, pressure. I, I, guess, I guess the pressure builds up, and it knocks me out. So I try to fall asleep before the plane even takes off. Hmm. Uh, so Rick Rude's mustache, I don't know what this means, but he asks... Uh, why do you have the most rosy cheeks in all of professional wrestling? Uh, you know what? You would have to uh, thank my mom for that. My mom has a lot of rosy cheeks, too. And I get embarrassed quickly, I think. Oh, okay. You know, when you, when you run around half naked in the ring, you tend to get a little bit embarrassed. I also have the smallest nipples. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, me and Al Shelley. Yeah, me and Al Shelley. Yeah, me and Al Shelley. Were there any truth when, uh, to the rumors when you're trying to... Um, you were having tryouts to be a WWE commentator? Yeah, uh, three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, and they wanted to change yeah. your name? Is that true? Um, I think they had mentioned it, but, you know, it never even got to uh, to a point where uh, it would have... They wouldn't have changed Carino. That's, that's easy to say. But, um, yeah, it, you know, it, anything with nicknames and stuff like that, they want to they wanna control and, you know, I was smart and I went and copy wrote my name. Oh, so they probably either wanted you to sign over the rights to it or just come up with their own name. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you know, one day King of Old School might be a name that might make some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about back in yeah. the day, Duke. I'm sorry. How about the back in the day, Duke? I was trying to think yeah, of a good name yeah. for you. <laughs> I'm going to take that one. <laughs> I, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Is your son oh, okay. still involved in wrestling? No, no, no. He uh, he barely even goes anymore. Uh, I think he's made it to two shows this year. And only because my girlfriend came with me. Uh, and he just wanted to hang out with her. So, uh, yeah, he really doesn't make it to many shows anymore. He, he's got, you know, when well, you're almost nine years old, you've got your friends, you got your computer, you got your video games, you got baseball outside. Yeah, he's got no time for wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I saw one of the shows where uh, some of the Japanese guys took bumps for him. It was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. It wasn't real funny at the time for me because I'm laying there. I had broken my hand in the match. I'm laying there, and I could hear people popping. And, boy, they weren't popping when, uh, you know, me and Tom were in the ring. But uh, they, were, they were popping, and all of a sudden I saw Kobe bumping Otani and Tanaka, and I thought, oh, no, this is going to be trouble. So when I went down to the locker room, like, I, I make a beeline for Otani. I'm like, oh, God, i got to go apologize. He makes a beeline past me, Right. He's going to Colby. Oh, Colby, uh, thank you very much. Uh, very good, very good. I said, whoa, 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 when did you guys work this one out? Uh, no, uh, we uh, go by uh, eye contact. Colby goes, yeah, he gave me the eye, so I knew I had to do it. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Do you plan on coming out with an autobiography eventually? Oh, yeah, eventually. I have about uh, 35, 40,000 words done already. Oh. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I write down the funny stories. I'm not going to complain about anything. You know, I, I write down the, the fun stuff, you know, being on the road, the little things you see, the little things you do. You know, um, 
uh, yeah, I, 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 I'll even reveal I have one chapter on Jim Hurd since everybody else does. I've never met the guy, but I figured I'd have to put him in my book. Sure. So, yeah. Are you a fan of uh, the Jim Hurd era? Uh, no, but I don't think anybody else was either. No, I don't think so. Uh, you a fan of any of the uh, wrestling books out now? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I try to get them all. I haven't read yeah, series yet, but... Uh, I just, I just read Harley's about a month ago, and I loved it. I, you know, Dusty has sent me a copy of his, and you know, Ole Anderson's is crazy. You know, that, that one is a lot of fun to read. Uh, you know what? Uh, after I, wrote, I read Ole Anderson's book, I went and beat my son um, because, you know, I was so angry just like he was. So, uh, yeah, I, I just went and beat up Colby for no reason. I think everyone um, we've had on has had an Ole Anderson story. Yeah. No, but uh, Bobby Heaton's was great. Piper's was uh, Piper. Um, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Foley, you know, really set the standard for them, and uh, you know, all of his books were real fun too. Yeah, I think they're my favorites. That's a stunning endorsement, though. I beat up my son because I read Ole Anderson's book. <laughs> yeah, if he yeah. puts out a new uh, printing, you can put that on the uh, back cover. <laughs> if he puts out a new printing, this will be better run. I'm sorry. If he puts out a new printing, it'll be better run and run fast. Might read it all over. Again. All right. All right. We got any more questions from the uh, message board, Barb? Uh, let me see. Uh, Rick Cruz Mustache wants to know if you ever got your ECW money. No, but I don't think anybody else did. You know what? I got opportunity. That's all. That's all I needed. Um, you know, uh, I, I'll never get the ECW money, but you know what? I, I don't need it. I made a career for myself after. And if it wasn't for ECW, I wouldn't be anywhere anywhere I was. Yeah. Right. And, uh, yeah, so if it wasn't for ECW, then I, uh, you know, I wouldn't be who I am. So, uh, you know, if, if anything, I owe ECW. Uh, Tyler wants to know if uh, Dream Stage actually owns Zero One, or do they just work together for the Hustle shows? Uh, they just work together for the Hustle shows right now. Uh, Zero One is actually owned by a... By Nakamura, uh, Yoshi Nakamura, Oki Odata, I think Otani's got a little piece of it, and Baltic Curry, which is a uh, big curry company. And I hate curry, but, you know, I'm just glad that they're paying the bills. But uh, Dream Chases is its own um, entity. So, But I, I, I would say that if, you know, Zero One ever got into trouble again, uh, you would definitely see um, Dream Chases uh, help Zero One out. Is that what the Curry Man gimmick came from? No, but... Uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't know where the Curry Man game uh, came, came from. But Chris Daniels does a great job with it. Yeah, that's funny stuff. Do you think he'll ever use it in uh, USA, or do you think it would work? I don't think he wants to. You know, I, I think he, um, he he figured that's his Japan gimmick, so he'll leave it there. You know, I would definitely like to see it in Hustle, though. Yeah, I think it would, it would uh, be a good fit there. There's a lot of questions here about something. I don't know if you want to talk about it. We can edit it out if you don't. We have a lot of questions from Duckman about the Yakuza in uh, Japanese wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I'm, 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 I'm over big with the Yakuza, so I can talk about them. So nice. Been over there that they, uh, how much of an influence do they have in the wrestling? Uh, it depends on what town you're in. <laughs> uh, you know, we pretty much know where the Yakuza is, and uh, you know, unlike like um, the uh, the mob in the states or Italy or stuff like that, the Yakuza is. Like for the people, they're, they're, you know, they're actually like their own police. You know, a, a certain town's police, and you know, I say like every big town has its own yakuza. You know what I mean? So right. it's not like they're trying to go and cause trouble. They, you know, they they actually make sure that people don't come in and cause trouble. And it's it, it, it's pretty much like what the mob was supposed to be. So, uh, but you, you know, not to go over the rails when they're there either. And you know. Uh, you know, if it's a big town and you got a favorite guy there, don't put too much heat on him, you know. You don't want one of these guys taking it way too seriously and, uh, you know, tapping it. <laughs> they ever take you guys out after the show or anything? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. You know, nice guys that really love wrestling. You know, I, I, I don't see any guns or knives or them, you know, or guys with one uh, one finger missing. But, <laughs> yeah, I think that's the old excuse. But everybody else, you know, those guys are real nice guys and they... You know, they take care of their own, and, you know, I, I see them making sure that, you know, they, they treat the waitresses and the cooks really good. So, you know, you really wouldn't even know it if, unless they were wearing the, they weren't wearing those white suits. Right. Uh, what's your future plans for wrestling? 
Just I'm sorry? Uh, what's your future plans for uh, wrestling? Uh, retirement. <laughs> no, uh... Let me see. Uh, I'd like, you know, I'm going to try and bring some more respect back to the AWA title, and hopefully whoever wins it for me passes it on. Um, you know, uh, I, I got some things going. I, you know, I want to start the dojo up. You know, I want to kind of sort of, you know, get my small company running again. And, you know, um, we we got some fair shows for next year. We're going to do, like, the old carny stuff, real old school stuff. And uh, that's stuff that makes me happy. And, uh, you know, keep growing. Well, not like my stomach growing, but, like, keep growing. <laughs> And, uh, you know, keep going to Japan doing stuff like that and, uh, you know, helping, helping the young kids, you know, helping the, the guys, the, the Jay Lethals and the Josh Daniels and the Kevin Steens of, uh, you know, today, you know, helping them become the big stars of tomorrow. Is there anybody that you've uh, trained from your school that's uh, fairly big now in the Indies, or do you think that will be big? Well, the, the only two guys that I've trained, uh, like I helped uh, guys in North Carolina before, but, uh, you know, I've, tra- I've trained uh, Ricky Landell and Alex Law. There were, there were two kids that I, I trained. Landell's really doing good. Uh, Law doesn't get out there as much as um, he would like to because, he, you know, he just graduated from the police academy. And, you know, when you start out as a cop in a, in a certain town, you get, uh, you know, the crap uh, the crap shifts and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, besides that, so, um, yeah, but, uh, you know, besides that, the, you know, he, he's a good talent. Landell's a really good talent. Um um, uh, I, you know, I helped train Mark Coleman and, uh, uh, for, you know, switch over from pride to pro wrestling. So, yeah, the I, I, you know, yeah, the hammer, <laughs> but he, he's doing a, he's doing a great job. If he wasn't doing a great job, I wouldn't claim, uh, that he's mine. Right. So you can, uh, check any of that stuff out at, uh, stevecarino.com. Yep. Yeah. Anything I'm going to do this tonight, so it'll be great. We've got another question from the message board, uh, another one from Duckman, who seems obsessed with getting you in trouble. This is another one that, you know, if you don't want to talk about it, we can just edit it out. Uh, okay, he, wants, he wants to know, uh, and this is in his words, why is Mitsuharu Masawa such a racist, and does it bother Karino the racist attitudes in Japan towards Gaijin? Uh, you know why? I think 60 years ago we dropped an atomic bomb on him. I'd be a little racist, too. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you know what? I, I go with Masawa a little bit, and uh, yeah, you, I don't think he likes Americans. I don't think Kawada likes Americans either. But you know, I think that's how they were growing up. You know, you grow up in the South. Uh, a lot of rednecks don't like black people. You know, it's, it's they might not know why they don't. You know, it's just what they've been told to, you do. But um, I think uh, for the most part, Masawa uh, books a lot of guys right now, and uh, Kawada likes me. I think. Uh, he hasn't kicked my face off. He's knocked me out a few times. But um, I, I think the, the tide is turning. You know, uh, the more Americans go over there, the more, the, you know, it's more accepted. But, you know, it's only been 60 years since, the, you know, the, the bomb dropped. So uh, I can definitely see why there's a little racism. Right. Oh, yeah. Any of the uh, Japanese guys ever stiff you in the ring? Oh, my goodness. I wish I had a list of ones that didn't. <laughs> no, they, they're all, they all work stiff. They all work yeah, really, uh, yeah. really tight. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you, you just, you learn that, that style and you, you just go with it. Right. They don't do it because they're jerks, they do it because, they, you know, that's, yeah. that's the way they're taught. All those guys are very professional and awesome. Would you say the Japanese strong style is your favorite style to wrestle? Or? Uh, you know what, I like, to, I like to learn all styles, you know, whether, you know, like Saturday, last Saturday I worked in Zabisco. So, uh, you know, working in Zabisco was, you know, that was total old school, but, you know, if I'm working Samoa Joe, I'm gonna try and kick his big fat head off. You know, so it, it's it's you know it, it's it's great to uh, you know do different styles. Yeah, you know, I love the Japanese style, but I love the old school style. I love the you know every style that I can work. I can't high fly. Yeah, I can take a great <laughs> super fly. <laughs> what, uh, what crowd you're wrestling in front of too? Yeah, yeah. Um, is there any uh, old wrestlers that you uh, try to pattern your? Uh, Wrestling ability after your wrestling style after for your promo. Dick Murdoch. <laughs> no, um, yeah, you know I, I love the old school guys. Murdoch, Dusty Rhodes, Flair, Barry Windham, Eddie Gilbert, Michael Hayes. You know, and then I try to throw um, you know the bits that I've learned in Japan from Choshu and and Kawada and stuff like that. So uh, I, I, I try to look at different styles and just you know keep keep moving and keep learning them. Okay. Um, well, before I let you go, is there anything you want to uh, tell your fans out there? 
Heck yeah. Um, go to stevecarino.com. <laughs> no. Um, well, yeah, definitely. But, no, I'd like to thank them for, you know, all the support in the last 10 years. If it wasn't for wrestling fans, you know, I would be working at the post office or, you know, digging ditches or something like that. Maybe teaching school. I don't know. But, and for, you know, for the most part, you know, it's, it's the fans that come out and they, they support the indies and they support the WWE and TNA and Japan and stuff like that. If it wasn't for them, you know, pro wrestling wouldn't be here. So, uh, um, you know, it, it's a big thanks for them. We're, we're out there for them. Are you going to be working any uh, dates in America over the next few months that people can catch you at? Oh, yeah. I got a ton of dates. So if you go to SteveCarino.com, I have my schedule updated. I'll be everywhere from Chicago to Texas to Florida to... Canada to Finland, everywhere, all over the world. All right, <laughs> you'll be uh, bringing the AWA title with you. Absolutely, unless I drop it tomorrow in Michigan. Right, right. All right, well, that's thanks. not going to happen. Well, thanks for being on. <laughs> we appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. And uh, good luck in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, this is Missy Hyatt, the first lady of wrestling, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com.